of today's webinar session, Reinvent Your Business After COVID-19. Mr. Deepak Verma has worked in Fortune 500 corporates like Hewlett Packard, Atel, and Wipro for about 20 plus years. An MBA graduate from NIHMS, a transformational leader. He was instrumental in carrying out numerous successful projects during his tenure. In the last few years, he is a leadership coach and change management expert for thousands of individuals across the world. He has conducted over 500 workshops and touched the lives of over 10,000 people in multiple geographies. Deepak has also served as the president of Toastmasters and was an advanced communicator bronze. Mr. Deepak has a proven record in training corporates like LIC, Bajaj, Finserve, MSP Steels, RBI, Andhra Bank, to name a few. He is also the author of Amazon bestseller, The Joyful Quotient. He is currently the director of Techno Spirit Consulting and is associated with Sprout Knowledge Solutions, which is an edutech uh, company focusing and specializing in upskilling, sorry, upskilling employees in niche areas like English upskilling, leadership skills, sales improvement, psychology, cyber security. This organization, Sprout, has strong association, association with uh, South India Textile Research Association and Coimbatore Bar Council and Bardia University and others. On behalf of Rotary Club of Satellite, I heartily welcome you, Mr. Deepak Sharma. We are waiting here for you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, uh, for the kind invitation and uh, also thank you for this uh, beautiful uh, meeting uh, I'm having in the Rotary. This is the second time I'm uh, being in a Rotary uh, chapter. The first one was 20 years ago when I was in Pune. I physically went to a Rotary chapter. A friend of mine had invited me and uh, this is the second time. In between, uh, unfortunately, I've not had the experience of going there. So uh, it's great. And thank you so much, uh, Sentil and uh, Devraj, for this uh, opportunity. And in the next uh, 25 minutes, uh, I'm going to run you through a small uh, presentation on uh, how life uh, can be, how, how, how we can actually tackle the myths and trends around uh, COVID-19. How can we reinvent our business and what will be the changing customer mindset? And uh, also in terms of uh, how can employees change, reinvent themselves, repivot themselves. So I'm just uh, muting everybody for the next uh, 25 minutes and uh, post which I will you know, open it up. Yeah. So that's just to ensure that uh, there's no disturbance in between. So I'm just uh, sharing my screen as we begin. Yes. So this is uh, uh, reinventing our business, you know, beyond uh, COVID-19. Uh, and uh, there are three particular uh, topics I'm going to cover in the next uh, 20, 25 minutes. Uh, the first is uh, myths and new trends. The second is uh, the customer mindset. And uh, the third is the new skills needed in the new emerging new world. So let's uh, dive uh, straight away into the uh, topic. So a lot of times uh, we have this myth and I'm hearing this a lot in uh, various uh, forums uh, uh, across that, you know, there is uh, it's, you know, the end of the world. A lot of, you know, negative uh, thoughts on end of the world. Uh, New York Stock Exchange is going down. Europe Stock Exchange is going down. Uh, India, of course, also is uh, going down. So is it a financial doom, you know, that's uh, there and, you know, nobody's buying and nobody is investing. In fact, just now I was just hearing accurate uh, Saran talking about uh, vegetables, etc. You know? So there's uh, people are not uh, buying, not investing. So there is a myth, and uh, people are a little scared about you know what's uh, happening uh, around. So let's try to see: is this a myth or uh, is it uh, the the truth? And uh, everything has two sides: a problem, the other side is opportunity. So is there an opportunity that we see in all this? And uh, the truth of the matter is that it's actually the beginning of the new world. So we agree that the world that we left in January may not be the same in the month of May 4th or May end whenever we reopen uh, ourselves. It will be certainly be a different world which will be welcoming us. Uh, people will still have this particular psychological impact on them. So customers will behave differently. There's certainly a financial reset button in all industries, including, of course, you've seen oil and gas, but also in manufacturing, in uh, IT, everything is going to have a reset button. But most importantly, I'd like to draw to this particular point, people will buy and invest differently. So we need to understand what will be the customer changing mindset 
and how will they be buying and investing as uh, time goes by. And uh, this is uh, the crux of uh, the customer's changing mindset and how we need to change according to how the client changes. So of course, there's, for the next few months, there'll all be a focus on essentials and necessities. And we need to focus on our portion of the business, which focuses on essentials and uh, necessities. There will be a future proofing of uh, people's businesses as well as finances. And certainly people will be thinking short term for the next uh, few months. So these are the primary changes that will take place in uh, the mindset of uh, clients. And uh, we need to have a changing mindset ourselves. So normally, you know, these questions, you know, what can I get? How can we close? These are the normal questions that uh, we have been having as business people, as uh, employees, uh, as uh, entrepreneurs, etc. But uh, now the question should move to what can I really give? And uh, it's not what can I get, but what can I give? And this question started off right with the COVID-19. Uh, uh, people are trying to give. Uh, trying to see how they can uh, give and more importantly, how can I help? So how can I help you and what can I give will be the, will have to be the starting point of the changing mindset of each and everybody, whether they're, uh, whether they're doctors or uh, you know, lawyers or uh, businessmen or manufacturers in any industry, uh, IT un uh, professionals, it has to, the, the mindset has to shift to what can I really give and how can I help you? We're not in a, nobody's in the mood of asking, you know, what they can get and how can we kind of close this, etc. It's more of the helping nature, which is extremely important, uh, you know, that is there. This small, uh, you know, snapshot of some of the sessions I've been running at, uh, for, uh, on change management uh, at uh, various uh, manufacturing companies of uh, trying to see how we can, you know, enable change in each aspect of, uh, you know, uh, of existence and how we can really grow with change and how we can ensure that uh, we focus on primary things that matter and we can control. Now, there are actually two slides and I'd like you to kind of draw your attention towards both these slides. This is the first slide and uh, these are really things that matter and uh, things we can control. A lot of times we focus on things which do not matter and things we cannot control. And uh, we are right now in the right situation, you know, as you speak, uh, there are a lot of people trying to control the situation, but uh, there are a lot of things we cannot control, including the lockdown, including uh, a lot of things around us. So we should really focus only on those things that matter and which we can control. And uh, that's a small sliver of hope. But the real power is in this next slide, which uh, I'd like to draw your attention, both uh, as Rotarians, as business people, as entrepreneurs, uh, this is the more powerful slide because a lot of times there are problems that matter to us and uh, there are problems that you can control. And it's uh, only a combination of these, the small arc in between that uh, we should focus on. Time is of the essence and it's necessary that we just focus on that small arc or that small sliver of those problems that really matter to us and uh, which we can control. And it's only these problems which you know, can, uh, can cause a real uh, change in the way we uh, look at things and, and, and the way we focus on solving these problems. So these are the problems that really matter to us and you know, which we can control. So these are the secrets of success uh, to in any industry we may be, even in an organization you know, which is um, business, not for, not for profit or whatever it may be, we have to focus on those problems that really matter to us and which we can, can control. And the current situation has really taught us this, that you know, we can uh, really focus on only those uh, small uh, point which we can uh, really control. That leads us on to the next point, which means that we need to redefine our problem. So let me give you an example of redefining a problem. So, the rising interest rate is really not your problem. It's somebody else's problem. Or, you know, the rising prices, it's not a problem, it's somebody else's problem. Our inability to handle this is the real problem. And that's when I mean those two circles which come in. The small arc which is there is really our inability to handle the situation is a real problem. It is not really the outer problem that we see, but it's the problem within us uh, the way we handling it, this uncertainty, 
each uh, person, individual business entrepreneurship organization has to see ways and means of trying to increase our ability creatively to handle each and every problem that keep coming their way. So example, you know, this is an example uh, of uh, something called as benefits, advantages, features. Many of you must have heard it. I just want a short video on this uh, in which I have referred to Jordan Belfort. So you'll see the screen coming up. So, benefits, advantages, and features. So, uh, you know, also, Kate Bass. Kafi famous say it, sales uh, techniques me. Uh, F A B D A F. Yeah. F A B or B F. And Kai Bar Jo hai, Ablog Shuru Karte hai features. He actually, it's in line with the seven secrets. Jordan Belfort, Wolfram Walker, it's exactly the same. Kai Bar Hamlog Karte, Shuru Karte features ke saath. और फिर जाते हैं एडवांटेजेस और फिर जाते हैं बेनिफिट्स के ऊपर फीचर्स एडवांटेजेस बेनिफिट्स लेकिन एक्चुअली हम लोगों को उल्टी तरफ से जाना है हम लोगों को पहले बेनिफिट्स देखना है व्हाट आर द बेनिफिट्स देन कम टू एडवांटेजेस एंड देन कम टू फीचर्स सो जस्ट वन स्मॉल क्लिपिंग ऑन द काइंड ऑफ सेल्स ट्रेनिंग्स आई हैव बीन डूइंग इन द लास्ट फ्यू डेज एंड uh, this is also a testimony by the country head of uh, Hewlett Packard, Mr. G.S. Murthy. The inner, inner transformation workshop that Deepak conducted for us at HPU was very useful. Uh, I think Techno Spirit has done a great research on how to transform leaders, identifying their inner self and transform to perform in the UK world. So his thought is on how to um, listen not just to the sounds that we hear but even to the signs that people um, kind of send signals during their communications um, he, he spoke quite a lot on empathy he spoke about um, leadership and what is required to do when working in uh, teams he did cover the most important MPR, the mutual trust and relation I mean, um, uh, mutual trust and respect aspect of every individual, especially when they work in a meshed organization. And he did, um, you know, emphasize on not just negotiation, but um, how would a negotiation land in a win-win on both sides, which is very important for each one of us uh, in today's uh, professional world and uh, also on the personal side of your life, right? And uh, finally, the 16 cap example that he took up was, I think, very, very useful. Uh, we would definitely apply that in our day to day professional life. And uh, thanks to uh, Deepak and uh, Texas Spirit. So, this was uh, Henry Packard at uh, Bangalore and a small uh, training I had done for them. So what is really needed? What are the new skills which are needed in the emerging world? And uh, this is a very interesting topic uh, because the world of course is changing and uh, we need to tackle what are the new skills needed by employees, entrepreneurs, uh, business owners. This is an excellent time for us to uncover our superpowers. And I'm going to list down to you eight questions, uh, extremely powerful questions, which can help any individual uncover their superpowers. So pay attention now as we go question by question, and this is inspired by Christy Cook, uh, who is an expert uh, coach in the US. But before that, I'd like to talk about a small uh, movie uh, called Cast Away. And uh, I normally don't see movies more than once, but this is one movie I've seen uh, multiple times. And uh, there are many learnings from this movie, but uh, I'm just going to focus on one particular aspect of this uh, movie. And it's uh, towards the end when this person who's been cast away on an island for four years, comes back to America, back to his home, and he's talking to his friend just in the last you know, half an hour, 20 minutes of the movie. And he tells that uh, when I was on the island, I was contemplating suicide, you know, because there was no other way that he could uh, recover from this particular uh, situation of being stuck on island. And uh, 
he tried to commit suicide you know hanging uh, a stick on a tree just to test it out but the tree broke and so he realized that uh, even committing suicide is difficult it's not easy and uh, then he was wondering what to do next you know and then he got the answer you know on the island and then he came back all the way to us thinking that his girlfriend is waiting for him but his girlfriend had of course moved on and married uh, somebody else and uh, so he again felt his life was broken but he realized that the same answer which he got on the island uh, he should continue to use it here and which is the same answer for uh, each of us you know who uh, are in these uncertain times and the answer and the answer is very simple is just breathe and this answer he gave in the movie you know, just towards the end that he just needs to breathe and uh, very powerful uh, you know uh, mantra that he's given that uh, you know each of us just needs to breathe because we never know what the next day's tide is going to bring us you know because he was on the island he made the statement we never know what the next day is uh, going to bring us so just breathing is such a powerful uh, exercise that uh, each of us uh, can keep doing in case we feeling a sense of uncertainty around you i'd also like to introduce you to the heartfulness relaxation technique it's a free master class available on the internet at heartfulness.org i am personally a certified trainer and if there's any information that you want uh, i can give it to you these are this is a not for not for profit organization and uh, we run these sessions completely free of cost uh, and you can of course uh, view the website at heartfulness.org excellent techniques in these days we are running webinars every day to help calm the mind and to lead a more balanced uh, life so coming back to the superpowers there is a need now as again as an individual as a businessman as an entrepreneur as an organization to rotate around your pivot so let's try to understand what exactly this is we all have a strengths and we have all been doing things for the last you know many years on a consecutive basis and now with this particular two or three month lockdown coming in a lot of changes you know happening in the world environment a lot of changes in the customers psychology mindset probably government policies probably the world policies is necessary to reinvent ourselves and the first thing is to rotate around the pivot and uh, while there are many questions i'm just going to in the short session give you eight powerful questions uh, which uh, can help you find your pivot and rotate around it and the first of it is what are you ridiculously amazingly good at and uh, it's a very powerful question if you kind of sit with each question for 5 or 7 minutes i encourage each of you you know later post the meeting tonight or tomorrow just sit with each question you know for a few minutes and you'll get you know different answers what do your clients say they love most about you so these are questions which will delve deep into yourself and also help you to you know understand a little more about yourself third one is think of a peak experience that you had recently and the fourth one who do you like to work work, work with and why now these first four questions are uh, you know for your current uh, state of being uh, to try to understand some of the powers that you have right now within you the next four are a little more deeper and a little more uh, powerful than uh, than these questions and the first of that is you know describing a time you got into trouble and how you got out of it so this is very interesting and uh, actually if you try to remember and recall for example if you ask me my personal story is i was in chennai in 2015 when it flooded and my house was 6 feet under water so huge trouble i lost almost everything uh, you know bedding and laptops and ipads everything so huge trouble but i got out of it so i try to try to recollect how did i really get out of it you know what are the tools that are used to come out of that particular uh, you know loss uh, that i had except my car you know almost everything went off and each of us have gone into some trouble and it's good to try to recollect how we came out of it it will give you a deeper understanding of yourself the sixth of the eight questions is you know how were you recognized as a kid goes into your inner child you know and uh, comes out what do other people tell you is your biggest quirk or idiosyncrasy again it gives you a lot of uh, study on yourself and i'd like to draw you to the last question the most powerful question and i've encouraged all my coaches to do it and they come up with surprising answers and encourage each of you to do it now that we are at home uh, the way to do it is as follows you have to actually go to your loved one you know three people who are very close to you it could be a wife it could be 
your parents, it could be your children. I, I would really suggest, you know, go to your children who are at least about 10 years old and take a pen and paper, you know, take a pen and paper like this and uh, tell them, you know, I'm doing some coaching somewhere and uh, I need to answer this question for which I need to ask you this. It is a very serious atmosphere and uh, make them sit. It should not be done in a very casual way. Make them sit and say, you know, I just need to answer this and I'm going to send it straight to wherever, you know, France, US or whatever, some, uh, you know, coaching. Ask them this question. It's only five words. What am I good at? What am I good at? That's it. And they may ask you, you know, uh, no, Papa, no, you know, Amma, what, what are you saying? I don't understand what you're asking. No, I, just say, I don't know. This is the question. What am I good at? Just answer the question. And uh, come back with the answers. I'll really be excited to hear what the answers are because uh, more than the questions, the answers are very intriguing. You learn something new about yourself. Because a lot of people who love you, who are very close to you, uh, they know things more than you, and, you know, which is part of the Johari window. I'm not going into details on that, lack of time, but ask this very powerful question, what I good at? And that ends the superpower uh, deeper questions. And uh, I'll move on quickly to uh, a very powerful uh, topic called as Ikigai. I'm a certified trainer in Ikigai and I'm just over the next few minutes, you know, five to seven minutes, I just try to give a brief on what Ikigai is and how does it work. So Ikigai is actually a Japanese term uh, which helps you to, you know, delve and try to find out new skill sets within yourself and also helps the person, again, individual, businessman, entrepreneur, whoever it is, to try to go uh, into a deeper aspect and uh, try to uncover those things which are his passions and for which uh, he can make a living out of it. It follows this particular uh, model and if you type in Ikigai in the... Uh, in Google, you'll you know, get this uh, matrix right away. But it's a little more uh, complicated than this particular you know, simple matrix. So it has four circles, if you see. And uh, the first circle, the one right on top, which you can see my cursor running, is things that you love to do. And then you have to actually to go to the left. you know, And then you see the second circle of things that you're good at. And then you go to the horizontally to what the world needs and finally to the bottom what you can pay for this is the right sequence and you normally start at the top a person should start right at the top uh, ikigai actually it's a japanese concept meaning the reason for being or the reason to jump out of bed every morning so that's the really literal translation in the japanese language so you begin with what you love and there are a lot of things that we love we love to sing dance paint etc you know, a person just lifts everything down without thinking too much. From here, he goes to, he calls out to, what am I good at? So I'm, I love music, I love singing, but I'm actually not good at it. So that doesn't come here. So it's a, it's a combination of loving and what you're good at. And only that combination is something called as a passion. From here, you move to the right, what the world needs. And there are things that you love and what the world needs, which is only a mission. You may not be good at it. And finally, from here, you go down to what you can be paid for. And most of uh, the employees today, they just focus on these two, you know, what the world needs, what you can be paid for. You ask many of the teenagers, many young people, you know, they want to become, you know, data scientists or, you know, IT professionals because the world needs it and they can be paid for it. That's it. They, they've, they've forgotten the top half of the entire uh, Ikigai model. They've just focused on what the world needs what you can pay for it, which is why you find a lot of people uh, getting frustrated, you know, uh, later on in life in the profession. Ideally, we should start right on top, what you love. And then you go to what you're good at. You should not stop there. A lot of people are there who do a lot of things that they love and they're good at it, but then there's no money in it. So I love painting. I'm also good at painting, but I've never known how to monetize it. I'm just giving you an example, not that I'm good at it. So it just remains my passion or my hobby and life passes away. It needs to move from here to here, you know, and you need to find various markets what the world needs and uh, what you can pay for. Anyway, Ikigai as such is, uh, it's a huge uh, thing. I normally run it as a three hour session to find one's own personal uh, Ikigai. But I'm just going to, uh, you know, kind of end with a few secrets on Ikigai while the time is uh, quickly kicking away. So Ikigai, the 10 Japanese secrets to a long life. And uh, if you just follow these secrets, it is... Uh, it will give a huge uh, implication in your current life. And uh, secret number one, 
it was very interesting secret number 1 uh, and i find this a lot in uh, the younger generation they want to retire people want to retire at the age of 45 40 35 they don't want to work but the first secret of ikiga is you have to get into a profession which you can work even at the age of 95 even at 95 you should feel like working you should choose a career where you can stay active and not retire throughout your life okay so that's the first secret that there is no retirement uh, you know as per the ikigai policy there is no 58 60 50 40 30 nothing of that sort no you know free money coming in you have to choose something because man is a social animal with a lot of activity around him he needs to keep doing something that's very interesting that's very important you cannot just sit back and relax so the mind has to be active the body has to be active and that's the first uh, secret of you know uh, staying active and uh, not retiring the second secret is leaving urgency behind and adopting a slow pace of life now luckily i think nature is teaching us all you know the hard way and i'm doing a lot of coaching to various people across the globe and uh, this is uh, one thing i find a lot of individuals are especially in mumbai i'm talking to a lot some people in mumbai they are not used to living a slow life you know they are they used to living a very very fast paced life luckily i've been to coimbatore many times so i know that you all live a little more uh, slower and relaxed life but a um, lot of uh, places the metros they live a very very fast life so the second secret is adopting a very slow pace of life leaving urgency behind the third secret and of course we all know this you know only eat until you are 80% full and you know being happy eat in constant divine thought with gratitude whatever you get with due regard to honest and peace earnings this is also one of the maxims in heartfulness the fact of you know how much to eat and how full you should be the fourth secret and there is only 10 secrets so here of well the fourth secret is uh, surrounding yourself with good friends extremely important even in the vedas upanishads it's mentioned your environment makes you it's very important to choose the positivity of circle of you know good friends around you you know which is why i choose people like senthil to be around me so the, the fifth secret is uh, exercise get in shape through daily gentle exercise now the words are very important daily and gentle of course i don't want to get into a debate here but uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't promote things like zumba etc it's more of you know gentle yoga tai chi daily gentle exercise is extremely important uh, in order to maintain fit the more vigorous exercise can damage uh, the body the sixth uh, secret and uh, there are only four more to go and here's the sixth secret i normally pause here if i'm giving a live session uh, and allow the audience to guess what the sixth secret is but since it's a webinar i will uh, not be pausing here smile and acknowledge people around you extremely important and um, we find this a lot in the west they actually follow this quite well uh, i've been to a lot of places in the west and they they have a natural smiling you know they tend to smile and acknowledge people uh, which sometimes they find lacking lacking in india so a grim face will really not help just you know a basic smile is very important it keeps the blood flowing it keeps the connectivity the vibration you know moving on all these secrets are based on having a long life so it's uh, extremely powerful secrets the seventh secret is reconnect with nature reconnecting with nature extremely important and uh, the eighth secret is having gratitude giving thanks to anything that brights our day and makes us happy so having that sense of gratitude uh, is extremely important it, it's uh, there are a lot of books written on it ronda brine has written multiple books on it given many, many speeches she uh, you know so many movies etc around it gratitude gratitude and gratitude it's extremely important and uh, that's the eighth secret the ninth secret is very simple i mean the image is a giveaway it is uh, living in the present moment and uh, extremely important even in today's life you know you need to live in the present uh, moment as you are and the tenth and the final secret as per the ikigai philosophy is to follow your ikigai and uh, you know that my friends you know comes uh, to an end of uh, ikigai but it's interesting to note that ikigai was created uh, you know centuries ago but it became famous in 2001 
by a person called Jim Collins. And he wrote this book, very famous book called Good to Great. And I'm going to end my you know, talk once I explain this particular story. And in this particular book, you can, if you have read it, it's a bestseller. He spoke about the story of the fox and the hedgehog. The willy fox, the cunning fox, and the innocent hedgehog. The willy fox tries to eat the hedgehog in various manners. It attacks it from top, from bottom, from under the tree, creating traps. It goes from the side, it tempts it. It has thousand techniques. The innocent hedgehog has only one technique, only one solution, and only one answer. It rolls up like a ball and puts its porcupines outside. It rolls up like a ball and puts its entire you know, spikes outside. And uh, so he called this the hedgehog theory. Uh, and if you look at it carefully, it's actually adapted from the Ikigai. He focused on, again, three things. What you're passionate about, you know, which is what you love. What you can be best in the world at, which is again, you know, take off of Ikigai. And what drives your economic engine. And in this particular book, Good to Great by Jim Collins, 2001, he mentioned that this central portion is the hedgehog. Okay, he called it the hedgehog theory. But if you look at it, it's nothing like the Ikigai. He just wanted to brand it in a different manner. So <laughs> he created this particular terminology, but it's, and then people went into deeper as to how he got this particular model. And then they came across the uh, Ikigai theory, you know, which is uh, known to us. So I'm very conscious of time, both in uh, personal and professional life. I, you know, I know that I've been given an exact slot, so which I'm uh, kind of, you know, coming to an end at. So uh, this kind of brings me to an end of this uh, very beautiful uh, session I had with all of you Rotarians. And uh, if there's anything that you want to know more about uh, how we can help in any manner, uh, either to uh, you as a club, as well as to your individual businesses, uh, or, uh, you know, uh, or to organizations, we'd be most happy to love uh, to help you out. Uh, please do connect to Senthil at uh, Sprout Knowledge Solutions. Of course, his email ID and mobile number is right there below. I'd also like to take this uh, opportunity to thank uh, the Rotary Club of Coimbatore Satellite. As I said, this is my second meeting in my life for Rotary. And uh, this, the first was in Pune. And uh, this is, and I never got a opportunity to speak at Pune. Okay, I just went in as a visitor and uh, I was just sitting like a very young boy, you know, at the back. But uh, here, uh, thank you so much for uh, having honored me and giving this platform to speak. And uh, with that, I come to the uh, end of the session. I'd uh, like to unmute all and uh, if there are any questions on anything that you want to ask, we have a couple of minutes. We can, you know, still... Uh, Take it up. So I'm just unmuting all and Members, if you have any questions, you can uh, uh, ask Deepak. You can ask questions. Deepak, that was a wonderful session. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, man, 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 Any questions you have, members? Thank you, sir. Yeah, I can see one question. Yeah, thank you very much for the message now in the screen. Thank you. Is there any thoughts uh, around what I presented for you? Anything that you want to add or uh, clarify? Yeah, uh, members, if you have uh, any clarifications or any doubts or any questions you have, please uh, ask Mr. Deepak. We have another one more minute for that. Uh, after that, I think uh, we can go to the next part. Yeah. Okay, very good.
I yeah. have a question. Yeah, tell me, madam. Um, during this uh, period of lockdown, can you just tell us like how we can uh, enhance to create a visual, uh, I mean, sorry, a virtual social intimacy? Excellent question. So, uh, when you say social intimacy, it is for your own uh, social network or for the business network? No, it's social and for, I mean group as well as for our business. Hmm. So, uh, you know, this comes, uh, this is for business, it comes on the topic of digital marketing. And of course, there are different tools, Facebook Live and uh, LinkedIn and uh, these are the tools where you can promote a business or organization uh, okay. in whatever manner, in a very structured uh, way. Uh, it comes to your personal uh, social, uh, you know, gatherings. There are a lot of uh, tricks uh, that I have learned personally in the last uh, few uh, weeks. Uh, a lot of the competitions that our families are doing across the globe called the selfie contest. So yes. uh, I heard this from the director of Post Hyderabad. So she had an extended family in US, Europe, and, and China, and they did uh, the children of the family the selfie contest amongst themselves. Uh, they connected very well amongst each other. Selfies and all this stuff. So, uh, in fact, it has led to a lot of uh, intimacy. This friend of mine, whose son has been doing a debate uh, amongst uh, various uh, you know, this age category in uh, various uh, places. Uh, there's a good friend of uh, mine uh, who has been running a similar interactive session with uh, their family, generally having a chai party, as they call it. Social, uh, virtually social. Chai party. Chai party, okay. So 4.30 p.m. something, they get together with a cup of tea you know, and some biscuits. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and there's a lot of fun and laughter around it. In fact, uh, they're feeling very close to you know, these things. Uh, very interesting you know, how they are. Thank you so much for the question. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Any further questions? So, uh, uh, thank you, Deepak. It was uh, uh, quite a, a wonderful session for us. Uh, thank so, thank you, one and all. And uh, uh, RJ Sanjil, uh, I think Deepak, you have to unmute RJ Sanjil. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, hi all, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, this is Sandal Kumar from Sport Knowledge Solutions. Uh, it was uh, wonderful and uh, pleasure to have all of you with us. Uh, in fact, it took a slightly longer time and thanks, uh, special thanks to Devraj who made it uh, organized, organized for us. So thank you again. Once again, we look, look forward to meet you again. So if you have any queries or any doubts again about this session, uh, you can actually pro drop in an email or drop in an email or give me a call so that we will be ready to help you out. And also, we, all, we also have a recorded session or recorded video of this session, which I'll be sharing it shortly to the press for you. Good, good, good. Thank you. Uh, Sanjil, can we continue this further? Uh, now, in the general discussion, pace it, then you can. Uh...